right, folks. Now, I know I have projects in the works. I always do this. You know I do this. Um, I've got stuff going on, but I just I get excited about something. And uh, full disclosure, this is the second time I'm doing this video. The first time I did this video, turns out there was zero audio recorded. So um, I've already looked through this. I've already done the unboxing, the inbox review. We're going to do it again. I'm going to show you everything again. But I ordered this um, about three weeks ago, and it just arrived. I am so excited about this. This is the Border Models Apocalypse Tank. Now, this is obviously not a real tank. Um, and although there's nothing that I can point to that proves it, okay, this is a model of an amazing Soviet vehicle from Command and Conquer, Red Alert. Um, it, and I, I, you know, you, you would have seen the, the little clips I had in the beginning of this video that, that shows that. Um, there, there's no connection. There's nothing here that says um, Command and Conquer, that says Red Alert, that says anything about it. But that's what this is. This is a really cool fantasy vehicle. It's kind of, it's a what if, like straight out of the box. It's awesome. Um, so I will tell you, having done this before already, um, this is a kit that you can put together, almost snap together without even painting if you want. It's molded in uh, different colors. And on the box here, it says no paint assemble model, right? So there are multiple colored pieces here that you can put on there. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how well it, all these little pieces go together without glue. I'm obviously, I'm gonna put it all together with glue. It comes with LEDs and wiring for lights. If you want to do that, you don't have to do that, but you can. Then on the box over here, it says painted model display. So this is with some paint and everything. Obviously when I do it, I'm going to paint it up. And uh, I think I'm going to do it, uh, well, I'm not exactly sure, but um, this is a very cool kit. And this is a fairly new kit to the market. Um, it's really cool. Great molding, great pieces. Uh, we're gonna get into it. Let's take a look at it right now. And um, again, I've, I've already opened all the pieces and I've looked at it. Uh, so, you know, now I'm actually, I could probably comment on it a little bit better as we go. So first, first of all, beautiful art on the instructions. One thing I will point out is that there are no painting guides, no painting instructions anywhere in here. So you're kind of on your own for how you wanna do it. Um, again, you can trace this to Command and Conquer, to Red Alert if you want, but there's nothing that directly ties it to it. I don't see any anything that connects it, but it is what it is. Um, so in the instructions, great parts diagram, very clear, very easy to make out. Okay, You even have this nice full color um, decal guide. Okay? Instructions are very clear, very well detailed, very well drawn out. Uh, very easy to decipher at, at first glance. I mean, I haven't I haven't put anything together yet, so I'm not sure. Um, but you start with the wiring guide for your your LEDs if you want to put them in there. I'm not sure. I, I've never really wired stuff up like that, so I don't know. But as you go through, um, again, very well detailed pictures of everything of of as it goes through. Um, not really so far anyway. Like I said, I haven't I haven't done it yet. Um, but the instructions look very clear. One of the things I love is that as you assemble the tracks, they're color-coded to help you figure out exactly which sub-assemblies go where. Um, so you're not just like trying to count track pieces as you go, you know, you put them together and then they have those little color-coded sections. So that's pretty nice. Um, looking through it again, like I said, uh, same comment, very detailed uh, drawings of all the pieces and arrows showing exactly where everything goes. And, you know, more of the same. Uh, 18 total steps. And, um, but again, no, no painting guide whatsoever. Um, and then you've got some little social media links there, some QR codes. Your decals here are very Soviet, um, just some, stars and then some hull numbers uh if you can kind of see it they, they look like they've been got spray painted in the field with some uh, dripping paint and some cyrillic you know words and stuff i love that they did the detailing all the way to the on the bottom of the hull you can see cast texture 
rare that anybody's going to see all of this kind of stuff. Um, but they they put it on. They put on detail on the bottom of the hull and everything. And they didn't have to because, you know, this is a fantasy tank. They're not trying to duplicate anything real, but they did it. So like I said, you can put this together without glue. Uh, there's, there's press fit together. I, I don't want to say snap together, but it's made to just, you can put it together. Um, so upper and lower hull. It is not that big as as you know 135 scale tanks go but as soviet tanks go it's a it's a large tank remember soviet tanks are typically smaller vehicles than than western tanks the turret has sort of a t90 type feel to me um but if you look uh, you know i i don't want to say there it's it's kind of lacking detail or anything because you know it it's not a real tank but um it has some some generalized detail and then there's lots of little parts that will go on it okay but notice there's there's you know you already see there's some parts molded in different colors um, so that you can not paint it if you don't want to um, so we've got upper hull lower hull you've got your turret top and bottom um, one of the things I noticed going through here is that there is there's only I think a, a, a few two to four maybe pieces I've saw any flash on whatsoever all the ejector pin marks are where you're not going to see them on the interiors of places. Um, everything is very well molded, um, very clean molded. Um, very little cleanup is going to be necessary. And even like, you know, I, I'm sure you're not going to see it very well, but great subtle texture. Um, I love that it says apocalypse right there on the, on the hatch. Um, just subtle texture everywhere. Really nicely done. So ammo crate, there's some ammunition that can go in here. One of the other things I like is that these, these, the way the sprues are labeled, very easy to see. Instead of just having to like look for something like that on the sprue, these cutouts, very easy to, to read the letters on the sprues. Um, fine wood texture there too. Like, you know, if you didn't want to paint it, great. I'm going to paint it, but very nice. Um, here's your LEDs, your wiring and everything. Um, I'm not sure where the actual switch is. Is that... I'm sure I'll find it, figure it out. It's in there somewhere. But you've got uh, LEDs for the searchlight and the headlights. And maybe I'll do that. Maybe I won't. We'll see. The only flash I found were on these sprockets, on both these sprues. There's there's two uh, D sprues with these road wheels. It's the only flash I found. Um, and again, very detailed stuff on the road wheels. It's kind of hard to see, I know, but. Um, fine little cuts on the on the rubber on the road wheels um, pretty standard soviet looking kind of wheels and everything so we got two of these sprues to work with um, now we've got some gray plastic uh, and you know you, you can see kind of the, the very soviet like um, hull storage type pieces um, there's lots of little details in this thing everywhere uh, they've got some optics um, ball sensors and everything that will come into play as we put it together. Um, I'm not sure what all the pieces are because, again, it's not a real tank. So normally when I'm looking at a real tank, and kind of, I can kind of identify what pieces go where and what, what they are. Um, it's kind of hard for me with this because, you know, it's not real. I know that these go to the hull and uh, suspension arms go in there. And we've got some mine clearing or dozer blade pieces, um, hull fuel tanks. Again, very Soviet looking um, and some other kind of, you know, just general pieces. But again, look at it. Very cleanly molded. I don't see any flash. All the ejector pin marks where you're not going to see them. Awesome. Um, we'll finish off the gray parts. Um, these missile launch tubes. Um, one piece with missiles in the tubes, right? So very, very cool molding there. Um, very nice to work with. Gun tubes are two part, but you know, some external fuel tanks. Um, again, clean molding, nicely detailed for what it is. Um, we can always work on this a little bit more, you know, to bring out some of the detail that's there and everything. But it's it, again, it's not a real tank, so who's to say? Uh, lots of track links. A whole lot of track links to work with. 
Um, so you've got some track strips, very Soviet style tracks too, with uh, no track pads, no rubber on there, just steel links. Uh, there was some, there is, I should say, there's lots to clean up actually on these track um, strips. We've got these areas on just about all of them. So we have that to clean up. I love these, they're like guillotine blades um, on on the front. Um, so you've got like your, your mine clearing blade and then like these just giant sharp blades. Um, if you wanted to put this together without painting, I, I guess you could, but these really would be great for, you know, uh, just some dry brushing and some chipping to show bare metal and, and some rust beneath. It, they're they're going to look really good with some detailing. I mean, really nice. Um, and then we've got these red parts over here. We've got a hammer and sickle for the front. Uh, fire extinguishers and um, I'm not sure what these are actually. Maybe some lights or something. And I think this is just that red trim on the front. Okay. And then we've got clear parts. Now I want to point this out. Showed this in the beginning of the first one. Clear parts included color decal included, paint-free and cement-free design, three red spotlights with tactile switches. The casting effects and code of the body are really reproduced. I, sure. All hatches, weapons, wheels, and dozer are removable. And this is the important part, wooden box and vodka bottles included. Okay. Now we've got clear parts. When they say vodka bottles included, they really mean vodka bottles included. Okay, we've got a grand total of three periscope clear parts. We've got two optics lenses, and we have one, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty vodka bottles. So, in true Soviet Army style, we have five actual clear parts for the tank and twenty vodka bottles. That's a lot of vodka bottles. I wish they gave us labels for the vodka bottles. I suppose we could paint them on there or print decals or something. But when they say vodka bottles included, they are not messing around. Vodka bottles are in fact included. A whole lot of vodka bottles are included. So um, I am so psyched to get started on this. Um, the minute I saw that it was a thing that existed and I got it on eBay, by the way, I'll probably put it have put in text, you know, how much it was and everything. Um, I am so excited to get started on this because I, I have been playing Command and Conquer for since I was, you know, this big. Um, this is a really cool project. And I think that there are so many different ways that we could finish this and, and, and mark it and paint it and everything. But here's my question. So I know I already have stuff in progress. I know that I have the, uh, the Premium Hobbies M4 that I'm working on. I'd love to know your thoughts. Should I finish the M4 Sherman, the M4A3, and then work on this. Should I, you know, start this and work on the Sherman and this, you know, together kind of back and forth? Or should I put everything else on hold and build this and get this done and then get back to other stuff? What would you guys like to see me work on? Because I'll tell you what, my choice would be to stop everything else I'm doing and get this guy done. Because this is cool as hell. <laughs> this is this is so unique. I love doing what if models, and usually you have to do all sorts of modifications. This is a what if straight out of the box. This is so cool. I love it so much. So what do you think I should do? What should I do? Finish projects I already have going on, work on this and the other ones kind of concurrently, or just focus on this guy and come back to the other stuff later. Please give me your opinions. Um, but I think this is gonna be a great build. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this. I think it's gonna come out great so many different options and directions we can go with and i'll probably throw some aftermarket stuff on there i mean you know we'll probably do some stowage and some other stuff too um and weather it up real nice so um let me know your thoughts on it okay and every, all you guys out in youtube land that are building your own projects remember keep building them build them well and i can't wait to come back with work on this well after i hear what your thoughts are so i'll see you again soon